COVID-19. Now, keeping that situation, delivery, not only and today, the drug delivery is has its own importance from a long back, today and tomorrow. Now, particularly, the yeah, delivering of a drug's specific location in that human bodies has been achieved by using an different kinds of an material that research towards and finding of an new materials or an altering an existing material to make them suitable for delivering the drug into a specific area or a tissue or a receptor of that cell in that body is become and most warranted research. There are a lot of development in that field of materials as well as we are able to understand that disease, pathology and its biochemical pathways due to its recent scientific developments. Based on that, that nano drug delivery system has emerged in a very good way and it able to encapsulate both lipophilic as well as an hydrophilic drugs. As well as these materials has been designed to respond depending upon that environmental stimuli, both it may be an internal or an external stimuli. That particularly that current researches are focused towards and biodegradable materials by using that hydrogels are, has been prepared as well as where there are a variety of an nanoscale formulations like polymeric nanoparticle, solid lipid nanoparticles, liposomes, micelles, nano dispersions, nano emulsions, micro emulsions, like that formulations has been made as well as with responsive and stimuli in order to tune that drug release based on that requirement of an specific tissues or an receptors. As we know that there is a sand, lot of complexities involved in an in vivo conditions as well as an clinical conditions based on that, uh, that new materials are emerging or it coming into that uh, field. So now, in order to have an environmental stimuli, we have a specific system. That specific system will also be called as a smart system, that system which can alter its properties based on that uh, environmental changes. It should be able to do an three important functions, which is called as a sensor function, processor function, and effective function. In the case of a sensor function, it has to be able to sense that signal from an internal source or from an external source. Accordingly, the received signal will be processed depending upon that magnitude of that signal and based on that signal, it to give that response. Here, the response is in terms of a release of the drug into a particular tissues or into that receptors. That similar responsive may be a different kind, whether it may be a pH, it may be an enzyme, a reduction system, glucose, something like an external or an internal temperatures, light, magnetic, or an, it may be an electrical or a mechanical stimulus. With that, there are a lot of materials available to have and make that formulation which will be responsible to that uh, environmental stimuli. One such polymer is used or widely studied is a sand chitosan. The chitosan, everybody knows that it is a mycosaccharide cationic polymer 
which is closely related to our cellulose structures. This kytosine has been obtained on deacetylation of an chitin as a major compound of an exoskeleton of cursosatin such as and lapstose or that cell wall of a few fungi. This kytosine was discovered during the during and 1859 by a Brugat while experimenting the chemical and thermal manipulation of a natural fiber of a chitin. The chitin is also known as the sand cellulose of that sea, which is a second ab abundant in that nature next to a cellulose. That chitin was discovered by an Hendrik von Gott who has isolated the chitin from a mushroom. He named it as a sun fungi in 1811. So in 1950s, there are a lot of developments happen in that field of an adocin where that uh, crystal structure of an adocin has been identified by an X-ray diffraction and IR spectra as well as an enzymatic hydrolysis. So in 1970s, there is a rediscovery or a tree interest has been thrown into a chitin and a chitosine. Since then, more than one five decades, there are a lot of researchers has been done in the development of an chitosine and derivatives of an chitosine. Before going into an users and its and properties, I like to put it as a sand. What is a sand chitin and an chitosine? As we discussed earlier, it is an, both of them as having a similar molecular structure of an cellulose, whereas that, that OH group in that cellulose has been replaced by an acid amido group in cases of an chitin, whereas in cases of an chitosine, that acid amido group has been replaced or an converted into an amine group. If you see that chitin, we can put it as an n acetyl glucosamine units with an beta 1,4 linkages. That chitosine is an derivative of an n deacetylated derivative of an chitin, which has an n glucosamine units with beta 1,4 linkages. So that N deacetylation has been obtained or achieved by using an 50% sodium hydroxide on reaction with the chitin solution. So the chitin as well as the chitosine is a copolymer. The chitin is does not exist as an in a pure form in a reality. So that Chitin or an chitosine has been differentiated that number of N acetyl glucosamine units and N glucosamine units present in that uh, copolymeric system. If you say that number of N acetyl glucosamine units greater than 50% than which will be called as a sun chitin, if that N glucosamine units is greater than 50%, which will be called as a sun chitosine. So that conversion into an chitosine, chitin into an chitosine, that two parameters are denoted by an two things. One is called as a sun degree of N acetylation as well as a sun degree of deacetylation. That degree of N acetylation that is called as a generally denoted as a DA, wherein that number of acid amido group in comparison to total number of an acid amido and an amino group present in that copolymeric system. In case of an degree of an deacetylation calculated with a number of an ratio between a number of an amino group present into that acid amido and an amino groups in that system. 
if the catalyst commonly consists of an 70 to 90 percentage of that materials in that nature. So that kinetin has exposed in a three polymorphic form, which is uh, maybe called as an alpha chitin, beta chitin, and a gamma chitin. That alpha chitin is a sun most abundant form. It occurs in most of that natural resources, which expose as a sun. If you can see it from this side with an arrow marks like symbols, it has a sun anti parallel form. That means that linkages established between and two units uh, by through an hydrogen bonding, that hydrogen bonding is very strong in cases of an alpha chitin. That makes that alpha chitin polymorphic form rigid, intraceable, as well as an insoluble in nature. So that next category, it is a beta chitin, is found in diatoms, spines, as well as an quartz spines, which is has parallel hybrid configuration, that is a sand straight line configuration uh, that makes that weaker than alpha chitin. In turn, this becomes a sand instable as well as makes the more water soluble. And then next category, if you see, that is a sand uh, gamma chitin is a sand mixer of both an alpha, alpha and beta chitin, that properties is also be has mixer or we can say that intermediate. From the chitin, the chitosan has been prepared by having a series of fun steps called as a sand decalcification, deprotonation, decoloration, and followed by an deacetylation techniques. So this process can be obtained either by a chemical extraction process or by a biological extraction. That major source for the preparation of a chitosine or a chitin now worldwide adopted is from a crabs and shops. That in case of first we will see it in case of a chemical extraction that crabs or shops will be grinded and powdered into a coarse nature that will be treated with a dilute aqueous hydrochloric acid solution to dissolve and calcium carbonate present on that cells so that that will be called as a decalcification or demineralization steps. In addition to that, that product will also consist of a protein. That protein will be denatured and removed from this system by using an one and sodium hydroxide. After that, it will be decolorized and then we will be creating a chitin. That chitin will be subjected into a 50% NaOH solution, which will be or a 50 to 40% NaOH solution at a hot condition that will determine that amount of deacetylation in that uh, formed product of an chitosin. Where we need to consider the two parameters, one is the sun temperature, another one is the sun concentration of an sodium hydroxide. These two will decide that number of deacetylation occurs in that chitosin. There is an, another year method, which is called as a sun biological extraction, where that coarse powder of an cramps will be subjected into an protease, which will be produced by a bacteria, which will be denatures in that system. Then, which will be, you will be getting a chitosin. That chitosin will be subjected into an an enzyme called as a chitin deacetylase that will be converted and chitin into an chitose. That most widely adopted technique is a sand chemical extraction. That biological extraction is utilized to produce an chitosin 
of an high order of an purification or more purified process product which has known pattern of an deestylation as well as higher amount of an deestylation in that cytosine units based on this that will be also called as a sign different generation of an cytosine that we will see it in an forthcoming slides what makes that cytosine is an more unique to and usable by that people or why it poses a lot of challenges to one scientific community as well as an opportunities for an scientific community to work on it the thing first thing we can property is called as a sand biocompatible and an non toxic natures that everybody knows that that all that biopolymers need to be an biocompatible and an non toxic in natures which will also be get degraded in that environmental due to an biological action that another important properties utilized is as an bio reabsorption of cytosine this property is utilized for and purification of an compounds or an metals from an waste water and another important properties is as an mycotic in nature often cytosine is widely utilized in a pharmaceutical field to deliver the drug substances into an eye or into an particular region of an uh, industry in our body and an, another important property which i already mentioned that cytosine has a certain stimuli sensitive properties or the derivatives can be made it into an stimuli sensitive that can be utilized for further for the development of different uh, stimuli responsive drug delivery systems particularly for an cancer treatment also has that uh, ability to hold more moisture content it is non allergenic due to these properties which is also be able to utilize in a cosmetics field it also has a lot of affinity to an protein it's able to encapsulate the proteins as well as and vaccines uh, so that uh, which can be utilized for a gene delivery or a vaccine delivery protein and peptide delivery in a successful way which is also be ability to be get functionalized that i already mentioned it, it can be converted into a different derivatives which can be utilized for a different purposes and it is also possesses a mechanically strong properties which is available in an abundant as well as a the source is a sand renewable and an another thing due to its an renewable nature that people are running behind of a development of an products based on an cytosine if you see that properties of an cytosine which makes us an unique or how the properties gets differentiated depending upon in nature so it has a sign i already mentioned it it is a sign cationic nature which is able to form an complexes with an different metals as well as a sign organic and an inorganic components the prop physical properties as will be depends upon its molecular weight degree of an deestylation that and viscosity if you see closely that viscosity is also depends upon that uh, molecular weight and degree of deestillation of its sand at its importance that degree of an acylation will affects its an solubility hydrophobicity and its an ability to interact uh, electrostatically with an different poly ions 
that property has been widely used to make and complexes of an kyphosis for making a different kind of a drug delivery system whether it may be an ionic chelation or an polyionic chelation or an forming and complexes by intra electrostatic interactions with the different poly ions whether it is negatively charged poly ions or a mixture of an ion if you based on a molecular weight uh, that low molecular weights as well as a low molecular deacetylation of an cytosine exhibits greater solubility and faster degradation okay? that will be in vice versa or an in opposite case in case of an uh, higher molecular weights and a higher degree of an acetylation will lead to an a slower degradation of an compounds and a lower solubility in an acidic solution the solubility of an components is you know that generally depends upon an pka of the components or an polymer that kyphosine exhibits an pka value of an ph 6.5 sorry pka 6.5 that indicates an kyphosine will be able to get solubilized in an most most of acidic solutions particular it is soluble in an formic acidic tartaric and citric acid but which is an insoluble in an sulfuric acid as well as an hydrochloric acid in a body which has been digested on oral administration which has been digested by an enzyme called as a san kinase that present in that uh, enzymes in that industry secreted by an my industrial microorganisms as well as which is present in an food plant food which has been consumed by us as well as produced by an lysosome which will be responsible for digestion of an intake of an kyphosis that if the question has come to what extent we can have an intake of an kyphosis that study is reverse that ld50 of an kyphosis in a mice which goes of an higher value of an 16 g per kg that's a huge amount of if you are converted into a human body as we mentioned already that kyphosis has can be functionalized if we say that some of an example that kyphosis kyphosis can be have an improved mucoadhesive properties then quaternized kyphosis will have an improved solubility and regulated kyphosis will have a more circulation time in that body so this slide shows you an waterland area that glass we can say that which will be widely used in that field of an drug delivery gene delivery and cell encapsulation protein binding wound healing contact lens implants tissue engineering antibacterial textiles as well as an bio imaging and is also being used in an food industries if you see that drug delivery that kyphosis based delivery system it's starting from an sir i am in our webinar i'll call you later i see that drug delivery it starts used from a tablet excipients into a nano drug delivery system it has been used in all dimension of an formulation in that uh, drug delivery systems as well as which has can be utilized uh, for making that formulation for different roles whether it may be an oral route 
or an parenteral root or an ocular topical intravaginal or an rectal any kind of formulations can be utilized or developed by using that kind of same as a sand uh, base material or as a sand excipients as well as due to its sand encapsulation properties or an rigid nature or interaction and binding with a protein so which will be used to, to deliver a protein as well as it's due to a flim forming properties which will be able to encapsulate that cell as well as that cells will be able to interact or it will be able to internalize into the cell at a greater amount compared to an other polymers that makes an unique for that cell encapsulation techniques as well as which will be used for a different gene delivery as we know that that gene the specific gene can be utilized to modify or to repair that uh, genetic diseases so that kind of a gene can be specifically delivered by encapsulating into that cytosine and make them target specific by attaching a particular ligand and deliver into that that will be cure or alter that uh, uh, more function or a mutated function of that system that you can be able to cure that uh, disease uh, in another body that another interesting uh, property or an use of that cytosine uh, is as an wound healing properties as we know that the cytosine is as an agent which act as a sand hemostasis that hemostasis is as an basic properties required for use as a sand wound healing properties as well as which is able to hold more amount of an water water absorbing properties this too makes uh, that compound can be utilized uh, for this purposes now if this uh, wound healing process as happening maybe that wound has happened uh, might be a chemical physical or a mechanical or a thermal injuries where the complex mechanism some are involved that can be maybe a hemostasis or an inflammation then followed by an proliferation in particularly and granulation of tissues contractions and followed by an epithelialization and after an epithelialization that tissue has to be get matured into become a sand skin i think uh, dr sujatha has raised her hand uh, and moderator can allow her to ask any questions if she had any, any questions so uh, shall we take the questions at the end of the session sir or do you want me to ask allow her to ask okay then uh, i lost the participant uh, will have an um, question at an end of the uh, answer question answer session at an end uh, yes, we can raise that your hands at a later stage thank you so this uh, kytosin is also been utilized uh, to make that uh, wound dressings that will be so sand hemostasis properties and foster healing of that wounds uh, has been reported and the products are available in market as well as that this has been utilized for making of and contact lenses and along with that contact lenses uh, which is also been utilized for that uh, drug delivery of and drugs and due to its an mechanical strength and biocompatible properties there has been utilized as a sand scaffold in that field of a sand tissue engineering as well as the sand implants uh, particularly in dental and some other field and recently 
that antibacterial property of this cytosine has been utilized to make uh, antibacterial textiles. Whether that nanoparticles of the cytosine has been coated on the surface of that cytosine uh, cloth and shows that antimicrobial properties or that polyesters or an polyurethane based uh, class in combination with and cotton fibers has also been made uh, that also shows an uh, antibacterial properties by utilizing antibiotics, which is also been used as an food additives in a lot of cases and majorly used uh, coating of and folds. Say for an example, now we'll have an apple that some kind of an in most of an apple has been coated by using an very thin layer of antitocin, which makes the product from an environment uh, as well as which is providing an antibacterial properties. There are a lot of researches, lot of publication has been recorded and available as a products in cases of an good packing, wound healing in that systems. So this in addition to that, the points we have discussed, which has also been utilized in an agricultural field as a protective coating for an seeds, as well as, as an treating agents, uh, particularly uh, for that property of an antimicrobial nature. As well as, which will be that titan adosin uh, hydrogels are used uh, for that uh, sustained release of water in that agricultural field, but that not been that much successive, still a lot of researches are going on that currently. Which is also be able to uh, has a plant growth promoting and disease resistant uh, inducing activities in a plant, as well as which has an immunostimulatory activities and able to open that uh, cellular diet junction in a reversible nature, that properties has been utilized in a most of a pharmaceutical formulations. Based on this concept uh, and based on that uh, availability or the source of the type of the nature of the cytosine produced currently that has been graded as a sun first generation, second generation, and third generation cytosines. That first generation cytosine, which has been produced mostly by a chemical process, where which has a sun poorly defined mixtures of and polymers having a varying degree of impurities as well as the sun composition. That is mostly unfit for a development of a marketable products, marketable products, which was dominating that market for a decade, uh, but still this cytosine, quality of an cytosine widespread today. That second generation cytosine will has that defined degree of an polymerization and acetylization, which will determine that quality and viscosity of that uh, of functionalizing nature of that cytosine, which is more suitable for development of an reliable products uh, due to its uh, known established structural activity relationship. And this has been widely occupying that market or unoccupied that markets currently. And a third generation, which has an even less polydiscose compared to a second, second generation uh, chitosins, as well as that even more dispersed in the case of an oligomers, as well as it has defined pattern of deestylation. This defined pattern of an deestylation has been obtained by using a microbial production of an 
ocean chitin and then followed by an chitin deacetylation by using a chitin deacetylation which has been obtained defined pattern of an or non random pattern of an deacetylation has been eliminated which gives us an third generation catosin which will also has defined biological activities more cellular modes of an action as well as it will able to create an new market opportunities in an futures but it has an one of an biggest disadvantage as of now that production of an catosin by this method yield is very very low amount another thing so this less so the cost of the product is very high so that we hope that is a sand current challenges or we can say that opportunities for an youngsters to work on that areas to have better yield and decrease in the cost of an third generation catalyst so before moving into van that similar responsive systems i like to have an understanding about that that pot or that information shared till now by that way of an short poll ask that moderator to post that poll so that the participant okay, can participate in that uh, poll okay sir shall i launch the first poll sir yes sir Okay. I request all the audience to kindly take part in this poll, a small quiz-like thing. Uh, it will be having five questions. Uh, you need to answer uh, any one of the suitable answer. I'm launching the first poll, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. The poll is active. I request all the audience to kindly take part in this. Shall we wait wait for some time, or we'll progress? Sir? Yeah, we will wait for a couple of minutes. Sir. Yeah, we'll wait for an one or two minutes. Then we can uh, proceed further. Sir, you can able to see the poll, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming. You can, you, you can able to see the results of the poll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can able. I request all the audience to kindly take part in this one. Uh, only thirty five percent has uh, participated. If you have any queries and any questions to ask the speaker, uh, you kindly note it, note them down. Uh, at the end of the session, the session will be open for question and answers. Kindly, I request all the audience don't raise your hands in between. We'll be having question and answer session at the end of the session. Sir. Uh, this poll is and continuing, and then more than fifty percent has been participated on that poll. Um, 
I think that can be keep continuing by that audience. I will go to the uh, next uh, part of our uh, presentation. So we have a different kind of an uh, stimuli responsive systems, whether it may be an a tickled by an internal tickles or by an external tickles. These systems is mostly utilized in the cases of an cancer treatment or on lung infections or on lung cancers or on the cancers occurred in different parts of our body. But that uh, triggering might be an internal or from an external, that internal tickles like an oxidation and an pH enzyme or an redox systems can be utilized. Or an external triggers like temperature, ultrasounds, light, and a magnetic field can also be utilized for delivery of an drug substances either at a tissue level or into an cellular levels. So, can I put an, an, an one example how it will be acting on it uh, or will be that uh, stress can be utilized as a sign stimuli response. As we know that in case of an cancer tissues, there will be a large amount of an oxidative stress. Due to this oxidative stress, there will be a generation of an hydrogen peroxide. That hydrogen peroxide can be utilized as a sun biomarker for identification of the cancer, as well as that is a major component of a reactive oxygen species or a marker for an oxidative stress in an carcinogenesis. This higher amount of an hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide will be responsible for alterations in and DNA as well as that self proliferation apoptosis resistance and so on. So this amount of hydrogen peroxide present in that uh, cancerous tissues devised uh, as a similar responses for delivering of that drug into that system. We'll make a carrier molecule or combine a molecular carrier which will be get oxidized under this stress. We'll make that or encapsulate the drug in that polymer and administration and expose to an hydrogen peroxide that will induce an oxidation that will clear that polymeric nature and that will release the drug in a particular or unspecific tissues. That is a sign one case we can take an example. So if you see that next part of that slide, we can able to see at and within the cell how this endogenous stimuli can be utilized or to um, make use of them for targeting of drugs whether that outside of the materials, whether we can go depending upon a pH, if you take within that cell, specifically a mitochondria, we can use an increased amount of an reactive oxygen thesis, what I have just explained it, as well as some higher amount of an ATP produced in the cancer environment. So that, as you know that, that mitochondria is a sign uh, that cell factories which is responsible for production of an energy on those things. So in such tissues that ATP will be at a higher rate and be used as a sensor. That another case, we everybody knows that uh, glutathione concentration present within the cancer tissues or and very high that is a sign two to 10 millimolar concentration instead of a normal cell will consist of a very micromolar concentrations, two to 10 micromolar concentrations. As well as that pH, as we know that 
that lysosome will consist of an acidic pH of an around 5 and 5.2 can also be utilized as a sense to like responsive system. The first, I'll take it as a same case study of an pH responsive targeting for which uh, we have, we need to modulate or functionalize that type of cell. As we discuss now, the pH between changes between a normal and disease cells, the pH of an cyto cytoplasm in a tumor cells, which will be significantly lower than a normal tissues. As we know that the blood pH will be an around 7.4, if you have an inflamed cells, which will be around that 6.5 and 7.2, that endosomes will consist of an pH of an 5.5 and 6.5. If you go into that lysosomes, it comes into an 4.5 to 5.2. So this pH can be utilized for that pH responsive targeting. There will, there will be a different polymers can be utilized as such, such as some cellulose, acetate, phthalate, polyacrylate, like things, or we can have an acid sensitive linkages in that uh, polymer like cytosines, uh, such as an hydrozones, acetyl, or cis acutanyl functional groups. So, if you see over here, that polymer, that cytosine will consist of a free amino group, which will be responsible for functionalization or for an functionalization property of an cytosine to which that hydrogen bond has been attached. When it is exposed into an, a lower pH or an acidic pH, uh, that hydrogen linkage uh, will be get cleaved and releases the drug present in that uh, system. One such system has been developed by us for an hour group, wherein we have taken a kytosine, which has been converted into an thalyl kytosine, in turn, which has also been converted to an thalyl orthoprocaryl kytosine. On another side, we also prepared a, a, an pegylated acid hydrozone or an acid hydrozone MPEG. That compound, that two compound has been crafted. We got it as a sun crafted pH responsive polymer called as a sun chitosine hydrazine MPEC, which is we used as a sun hydrazine as a sun cleavable as linkage in an acidic medium to enhance that nanoparticle system in an blood for an having long circulation we add up or we had that uh, impact in that system. So the developed polymer or a synthesized polymer has been characterized by an IR, NMR and MOS spectrophobe and that polymer has been utilized for the development of a formulation where we have taken as a system prenilis solar as a system model Get into an lung inflammations, particularly for treating an um, asthma conditions or an prolonged asthmatic conditions, which will leading into an lung cancer. And another thing to which we saw, we also loaded an uh, artinatrial peptide so that that will be specifically reaches into that cell. That is the same whole concept of this. Uh, making an prenisolin loaded polymeric nanoparticles. Here in that loaded, that nanoparticle has been produced by a dialysis method wherein that particle or that synthesized polymer dissolved in a DS, DMSO and loaded in a dialysis bag which has been dialyzed against the distilled water on a dilution, dilution or diffusion of a water into a dialysis bag. Uh, the concentration of a DSMO, DSMO, DMSO has get decreased so, uh, that which will lead into 
precipitation of an nanoparticulate system. That nanoparticulate system has been characterized or an unisolar nanoparticles characterized for its and cortical size, drug release, drug loading, and several chemical properties. You can able to see that in pictures of these um, polymeric nanoparticles, as well as we have carried out uh, an pH responsive weight loss study by keeping an two pHs that blank polymeric nanoparticles has been put it over there and then frequent time intervals the sample has been taken and that weight or an rigid particle has been quantified that's that results shown that at an pH 7.4 that particles are at most stable compared to an pH 7 pH 5 that indicates that Acid linkage is undergoes a certain cleavage, uh, which is unable to maintain that uh, rigid structure of an polymeric nanoparticles. Further, we have studied that release pattern, drug release pattern of, of that uh, polymeric nanoparticles at two different pHs. We are able to visualize and pH five more amount of that drug released. Uh, due to decomposition of an um, hydrogen bond present in that uh, polymer in an environment, acidic environment. So in order to prove that our polymeric system is an non-toxic, we have tested in an uh, raw cells, raw cells to four, 6.7 cells where we can the cells were treated with a different concentration, which shows that cell viability has been maintained. That proved that that formulations are and safer side. As well as we wanted to found uh, to what extent uh, that formulation is as an active, for which we have treated that cell by using an lipopolysaccharide in this is an oxidative potential or the production of an nitric oxide and then treated with an our products. So we can able to see over here that uh, LPRs treated will show a nitric concentration at a higher amount uh, whereas that LPS present in a prenisolin, LPS and a prenisolin as well as compared to that that LPS with an prenisolin loaded nanoparticle showed a lesser nitrate concentration. That clearly indicated that produced nanoparticles are able to enter into that cells at a greater amount and reduces that production of nitric acid. So that which clearly says uh, that system is an effective compared to that uh, physical blend of that system. As well as you can able to see it over here uh, that a fluorescent image of this LPS with an polymer loaded system sources and more fluorescent natures uh, that blank when you are having a prenisolin loaded system that fluorescent has been get reduced uh, due to this uh, reduction in that ROS of that uh, ROS. Again in an, another study we have developed an thermoresponsive uh, polymer systems as we know that uh, N isopropyl acrylamide nipam has been really used as a an thermosensitive polymer. But it's an LCET, low critical solution temperatures will be in less around 30 degrees Celsius, which may not be usable to use as a an stimuli responsive system in a biological conditions. In order to increase its an LCST, we have utilized as a an kytosine or we can say that kydosine crafted nipom polymer system has been developed for a thermoresponsive system. Wherein 
initially we have activated by using an uh, nipam has been activated by introducing an primary amine group and we have prepared in an another step we have prepared an kytosine converted into an carboxy methyl kytosine these two has been crafted together to obtain a nipam poly nipam crafted uh, ortho carboxy methyl kytosine polymer so that has been characterized by using a different uh, spectral techniques and that amount of an uh, amine group present has been identified by a calorimetric technique now that polymer has been converted into an polymeric nanoparticles by using an ionic gelation method and after that uh, we also evaluated a thermoresponsive behavior of a polymeric nanoparticle system and by using an observing that uh, solution of uh, transmittance of solutions uh, in a 600 nanometers if you see that uh, uh, carboxy methyl ketosine will source a 100% transmittance uh, on a solubilized state uh, when it is while increasing the temperature also when you are using an uh, crafted polymers the transmittance are getting and decreases further decrease has also been obtained in cases of an uh, polymeric nanoparticles that clearly indicates that polymeric nanoparticles are able to establish or shows and thermo responsive behavior so this behavior further evaluated in terms of an drug relays so that drug loaded system has been subjected into an different temperature drug release studies carried out at different temperatures such as at 20 and 42 degrees celsius uh, at 30 degrees 37 degrees celsius we could able to find uh, more amount of the drug release uh, still if you are increases that uh, temperature more amount of the drug has been released uh, with a short span of that time that clearly shows in our studies that means in a cancer tissues if the temperature more than 30, 37 degrees celsius or reaching at 42 degrees celsius uh, that system is able to releases the drug encapsulated drugs at a greater extent uh, produces an required therapeutic efficacy here also you can see from an another slide we also find it as a sense prepared and thermostable as well as a sense thermo responsive as uh, nanoparticle system that put it into an um, different temperatures uh, that particle size will be getting an alter on increasing of a temperature that particle size has been get increased so similarly at an previous cases we also documented that uh, cytotoxicity of an mtt acid i'll put it as an so that both cases we have seen ph responsive system as well as a san thermo responsive system how that kytosine has been functionalized and utilized for an stimulate the response in an another study we have used uh, as a sun water soluble kytosine to enhance the circulation time as well as and internalize that nano emulsions containing the drug substances into that uh, cancer tissues as you know that for that uh, we have taken as a sun drug which is called as a sun capothecin which has a sun effective anti cancer effect against broad range of an uh, cancers but it has not been utilized or an approved by an fda for an therapeutic uses 
due to its poor water and oil solubility and its toxicity. But its derivatives like irinotecon, hypotecon, has been captured. Water soluble forms of these drugs has been marketed. But we want to use the same parent compound. This campothecin has preventing resealing of a DNA single strands, breaks by inhibiting a DNA topoisomerase. Enzyme 1. As already mentioned, that campothecin will also act as an poor water solubility as well as as an water oil solubility. That poses greater challenge you in order to develop an, an emulsion formulation or a microemulsion or a nanoemulsion formulation. That another problem in a campothecin is maintenance of an active lactone form. That active lactone form is responsible for that biological activities. This active lactone form under, under physiological conditions undergoes an hydrolysis and converted into an carboxylate form. That carboxylate form Will lead into a less affinity, reduced membrane association, as well as which will induce a charge in the drug molecules. So less diffusivity will occur. In turn, the cytotoxicity of that campothecin will be get reduced. There is an another problem with a carboxylate form is a sand unpredictable non-target uh, toxicity as well as which will able to bind quickly with a protein and rapidly eliminated from that body. So that major challenge to us is to product that lactone form in order to again in addition to that make them solubilized in an oil as well as in a water system. So for which converting or make usable form of an campothecin, different kinds of an formulation has been approached. There are a lot of reports has been reported. So we also attempt uh, uh, to enhance the oil and then water solubility of the campothecin and producting an lactone form by using the technique called as an microemulsion as well as an nanoemulsion, which has been stabilized by Kaikos. So that case study I am today presenting is based on a nanoemulsion formulation, what we are uh, carried out. As we know that, that nanoemulsion is characterized as a non-equilibrium condition, of an heterogeneous system composed of liquids where that nanotroplets of an oil disposed in an aqueous continuous phase where the system is stabilized by using of an appropriate concentration of an surfactants and followed by homogenization. So you know that that some amount of an physical energy is required to form a nanoemulsion compared to a microemulsion. So, always in this system will be act as a sand reservoir for a lipophilic drugs, as well as a sand product that uh, molecule, leaching of a molecule into an external environment and protecting from that environmental physiological environment and promotes from an hydrolysis and enhancing that greater internalization of an molecules. That kytosin has been used to coat that uh, aqueous layer of that uh, system or that droplets uh, that will also promote influx of an drug molecule or the droplets into that cell cells. So for which to design that system, nanoemulsion system, first we determine 
that uh, solubility of an capothecin in a different oil systems oils it has been mostly based upon an vaccinated coconut oil different grades that combination of an mono dyes diesters as well as and synthetic oil called as an benzyl alcohol and surfactant systems different surfactant systems we also incorporated the system called the uh, um vitamin etpgs vitamin etpgs so, so that will shows an amphiphilic properties which is also has that uh, properties of an weak lipoprotein uh, mediated effluents so this also sources and certain salt so this oil solubility has been determined in a different oil we showed that result shows that uh, benzyl alcohol as well as and captax 300 sources and higher oil solubility so instead of using an benzyl alcohol as such we determine and oil solubility in a combination of an benzyl alcohol and captax 300 we found that captax captax uh sir benzyl alcohol and captax 300 at the ratio of an 3 is to 1 shows better oil solubility so this combination has been taken forward as well as we have utilized this and twin system combined with an vitamin e tpgs as an surfactant mixture to make that uh, nano emulsion formulation first to identify that formulation which is Occur or able to form by using a pseudo ternary phase diagram technique. As the most of us knows that we found that uh, that concentration of an benzyl alcohol um, captures 300 at that ratio of an 3 to 1, and by using a surfactant mixture at that uh, ratio of an 2 to 1, which consists of an vitamin E. tpgs and twin at at the ratio of 1 to 1 shows an bigger uh, nano emulsion forming so particularly you can see it from an c where is that the more amount of an white zone indicates that the wider region is present for the formation of an nano emulsion from that we have identified some of the formulations and it's a dispersion stability by using an centrifugation technique heat cooling te techniques and prisco cycle so we made it a different uh, nano emulsion formulation by varying that composition of an oil and an surfactant and we could able to find uh, uh, some system which is stable in that uh, subjected to an uh, conditions whether it is in physical thermal or an cooling conditions you can able to say that green color which shows us an three formulation which varying that uh, surfactant concentration of an 15 20 sorry 20 25 and 30 with that oil concentration of an 15% so that formulation has been the taken for the further studies with that we have prepared and two sets of that formulation in one set we have used as a saline solution as a an external phase which has been prepared by the technique by simple stirring technique followed by an sonication for which we have dissolved the capothecin in an oil system and to which the surfactant system has been incorporated stirred to which the saline solution has been incorporated and sonicated in case of an ketosin stabilized water soluble ketosin uh, put it into that system has been utilized after sonication we are able to get uh, both saline stabilized or an ketosin stabilized uh, systems uh, non emulsion system 
global size or an, of the nano emulsion has been um, estimated which shows the sand particles uh, global size 9 to 58 nanometers in the case of an saline in case of an having an external phase kytosine stabilized uh, is varies from an 42 to an 64 nanometers so when you are having a uh, kytosine stabilized which is also shows the sand positivity zeta potential varying from an uh, 15 to 18 sorry 13 to 18 uh, millivolt but we have not received as a sand uniform zeta potential depending upon that uh, surface and concentration. As well as the pH with refractive inters, viscosity of that formulation has also been identified that, uh, that we are able to solubilize more than 300 microgram of a capitalization in per ml of an system. So these systems has also been subjected to an temp which shows the sand temperature over here. And followed by, we also had as a sand a fluorescent image that clearly indicates the presence of an camphothesin, the bright spot in that system, shows that presence of an camphothesin in a non-emergent system. Again, as usual, we have also uh, studied that uh, drug release from that uh, system which shows that uh, a kytosine stabilized system shows better drug release pattern compared to a uh, saline containing systems. If you see that percentage of, uh, with that, 24% has been released from a uh, solution, campothesin solution and 49 to 58% or an 59% from a nano emulsion system and an, uh, 50 to 62% from a um, kytosine stabilized system. As well as, in order to find it, whether the system is able to susceptible for protein binding. So if it is susceptible, once it's binds with the plasma protein which will be quickly relieved from that system. In order to check, we have taken as a sand plasma protein, uh, we have taken the blood, plasma protein has been isolated to which we incubate that uh, nano emulsion and isolated or and measured the global size of that system. The global size of the system is not increased during the periods of and three hours that clearly proves us uh, the poor adherence of that plasma protein into the surface of that nanoparticles uh, that made that uh, system is comfortable or uh, have longer circulation of life in that system. If you see that um, presence of an non-ionic surfact will also provide an amplifying charge, which is also prevents adherence of and plasma proteins in addition to hard kytosins. In order to source that when it is administered parenterally, which will not induce the sand hemolysis, we also studied as the sand hemolysis potential of an both system, both nano emulsion systems. So, we have taken a blank systems of an having a higher oil and surfactant concentration of the third formulations. We could able to find it out uh, our formulations, both the kytosin stabilized as well as the saline. The formulation consists of a saline, will show an acceptable percentage of an hemolysis. That's that line indicating that acceptable level, that is an 20% uh, or less than 20% is an acceptable. That indicates our formulations are comfortable with a plasma or a blood solution, 
blood or does not induce the same hemolysis when it is administered. In order to see the cytotoxic potential of our formulation, as well as to show that our formulation is safer, blank formulation is safer, we have tested um, by using an cytotoxicity studies uh, in um, by his MPT assay. You can clearly see that from the figure when the formulation treated, that is an uh, blank formulation, nano emulsion will choose a higher percentage of unself viability compared to one drug containing uh, formulation. So both kytosine sublase as well as a nano emulsion shows a greater bio self viability when you are increasing that uh, kytosine or an incorporating an capothecine that shows a greater decrease in that cell viability or we can say that uh, anti-cancer properties. The kytosine formulation that is in pink color um, shape, we can see that it has sources and greater decrease in that um, cell viability indicating that um, more cytotoxic effects. We also find it uh, by using a comat assay. That assay is used to, to find it out as a sand. Um, the formulation is able to produce any genotoxicity. There are and different techniques are used out of which we have taken as a sand comat assay, which is based on an peripheral lymphocytes. We have taken a blood from which we have isolated and lymphocytes to that lymphocytes we have treated that formulation and subjected to an electrophoresis and that image has been observed that and encountered that uh, peak to tail ratio or head to uh, tail ratio <laughs> so you can see it and some of the pictures over here uh, most of that um, are in a particular uh, special shape the sum of them has been get this course. We have taken consideration of an only um, having a physical shape that is a global shape but in proper conditions that others will not be concerned. Now that tail ratio is yeah mother. Yeah, I'll stop it with that. Um, so, we can have it, uh, the stability has been, um, the genotoxicity studies has proved that our formulation is uh, more safer, it does not able to produce us an, any genotoxicity. So, in order to find it, it is an efficacy and an in vivo, we have taken a biopsy mice which has been induced with a breast cancer to which we have produced uh, or we have injected campothecin formulations present in a nanoemulsion as well as in kytosine stabilized nanoemulsion and different parts of an organ has been isolated and quantified as well as uh, amount of campothecin present in the system and we also imaged the tissues that clearly um, indicate breast cancer's tissues uh, will assess a more amount of an uh, campothecin compared to an other tissues. But you can able to see some of an uh, dots in an um, liver and an kidney uh, that will also be leads to an uh, nearing organs uh, into that breast cancers. So this is an image which shows us an to what extent uh, after an three hours uh, of exposed uh, of an kytosine stabilized as well as a sand um, non-emulsion. So you can able to see at a top corner, right corner figure, so small amount of an campothecin as well as the cancer, breast cancer tissues has shown a better targeting ability. So with that, we can able to show that uh, the formulation will has uh, high acceptable hemolytic potential and low genotoxicity greater cytotoxicity and we can have also 
targeting efficiency of an campotrizin into that uh, breast cancer tissues by a passive targeting mode. And in vivo biodistribution is also proved uh, that formulation can be able to effectively target the cancer tissues compared to that uh, campotrizin solution. So right now, I request that the moderators to post that uh, second poll. Um, with this, I think I thank you for that audience for presenting in online. I think more of an four, 431 audience are listening to my talk. Thank you for that audience for listening. As well as I request to take part in that post uh, polls, as well as I'm glad to answer some of your questions. I request that moderator to post that poll first, then I'll be glad to take up on some of your questions by the audience. Respected audience, I'm uh, posting the second poll. Uh, kindly answer the questions of the second set of uh, this program. I'm launching the second poll, sir. You can see on your screen soon. Request all the audience to kindly uh, give your opinion on the poll. We are running out of time, uh, so I request all the audience to kindly make it fast. And then, first of all, I could able to see that most of them has been uh, responded correctly. I expect that it's uh, that means. I hope that uh, our audience, we know that there's uh, most of them are from and faculties and unlearned faculties. Most of them is are working on that area. So that's a basic, some of the basics related to when cytosines has been addressed very properly. I think here also I can able to say most of them is in going on and, um, in and right way. I would say that um, in case of an external stimuli, that most of them is answering it and right way. You know. So meanwhile, that poll can go on. I think I could I could uh, able to take some of that questions. Okay, sir. We can open uh, for an one by one. So fine. that's done. Okay, sir. So I request audience to kindly raise their hands in the Zoom app so that I can able to see you. And uh, yeah, uh, sir, we, we will take a question from Dr. Kiran Kumar. Yes. Sir. Yes, Kiran Kumar, please. Kiran is muted. Kiran is muted. Sir. Hello. Sir, sir, Dr. Kiran Kumar, you are open to speak now. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I would like to ask you that this comparison belongs to which, uh, according to BCS classification system, it's a class 4 drug. Okay, sir. Uh, yes. It's a class yes. 4 drug. Yeah, it has highly permeation. It class two. Class two drug. Yes. Okay. Then uh, among all other novel techniques, uh, nano emulsion is showing a better bioavailability than other techniques like uh, SLNs or nano suspensions, etc. So the herein we are able to show that uh, more amount of fan uh, uh, campotrizin can be encapsulated whereas in other cases we have seen uh, up to 150 to 160 uh, microgram per ml of the formulation has been encapsulated our case we are coming around at 300 so that due to a higher amount of an encapsulation which is also sources and uh, higher amount of an substances are expected to present in that uh, 
and another thing is whether it is inhibiting the pgp mechanism also yeah it has its own role since we have incorporated uh, uh, vitamin e tpgs with that uh, aim only we have incorporated that study i have not in uh, put it over here we have also studied uh, with vitamin e, e tpgs as well as uh, san um, pgp inhibitors we also studied uh, that results we have not been incorporated in this presentation and not communicated also there some kind of studies we are in also under in progress okay sir thank you uh, i request all the audience to kindly confine to one question because there we have number of uh, hands which was risen uh, now uh, we will take the question from Mr. Uh, dr dwaraknath reddy sir sir your mic is unmute now you can yeah. talk to us sir you can speak now sir yes. Uh, sir, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Dwaranath. Uh, sir, how are you, sir? Yeah, fine, Dwaranath. Ready. How are you? I am very happy. Yeah, fine, sir. I am very happy to listen your class after 13 years, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, sir, I am having asking the general question for you. Yeah, please, sir. Uh, yeah, what are the nano formulations available for to treat the COVID-19, sir? Present, present. So I think so. We can. Nano, I heard the silver nanoparticles are using for inhalation therapy. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, regarding so that, that is in metal-based nanoparticulate systems that can be utilized, but all are in uh, studies only. There are some of the studies they are making it. For, they are also testing and proper system. Um, they have proposing and concepts as of now. That is our uh, real condition. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Now we'll take the question from uh, uh, Suchitra, madam. Thank you. Thank you, Reddy. Uh, Suchitra, madam Suchitra, yours, uh, your mute, mic is unmute now. Hello, uh, madam, are you there? Okay, sir. We will take the question from Ankit Acharya. Yeah, Mr. Ankit Acharya, you can speak. Uh, hello, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon, madam. Uh, sir, I have several questions. Uh, questions one by one. Yeah, I think uh, you can restrict to some of the questions. If you have any more questions, you can uh, uh, put it into an, uh, my email. So that I can answer it. Uh, my email ID is an Nadesan Subu one at the gmail.com. Okay, sir. Thank sir, you. Then you are, I am yeah. asking uh, two questions only, sir. Uh, yeah, please, please, please. Okay. So my first question is uh, which few fungi is mainly consist the structure of Chitosan? Sir, it's a mycelium based fungi. Can is as that uh, um, chitosin has been utilized for that uh, chitosine um, development. Okay, sir. And my uh, second question is, um, sir, suppo suppose if I use uh, the chitosan material for drug delivery, then uh, uh, second generation or third generation I choose? So the second generation is available plenty. Okay. So you can get it from a different sources. But a third generation is available from an limited sources, particularly from an uh, academic researchers. Uh, they are only having their short ups, which is uh, that is based on an Europe countries and uh, University of Munster, University of Kent from an Europe. They have that sort of from there only you can able to get. But the cost cost of that product is very high. If you are going with an basic research or a development of a formulation for a low molecular weight drugs, that a second generation may be better choice. Thank you, Ankita. 
Shall I take that next question? Dr. Suchatra, madam, your, your mic is unmute now. Ah, uh, hello. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, madam. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm Dr. Sucharita, sir, uh, working as an associate professor. Uh, thank you for your diligent session and uh, my immense greetings to organizers to for organizing such a great uh, uh, FTP program. Thank you. And here is my question, sir. Uh, yeah, here is my question, sir. Uh, what is the criteria you have followed for the selection of linkers in the conjugation of the Chitosone? So, what? we have, yeah. yes, yeah, we got, uh, got your questions. There yeah. are different. Uh, uh, linkers or sensitive linkers are available out of which we have seen which shows more amount of an sensitive may be a thermoser responsive as well as a sand uh, ph response as in okay. medium okay. we have chosen an uh, that linker which shows better sensitivity in certain cases we have also uh, seen since we are in an academic environment which are less studied also. That yes. can also we are choosing. Okay. Have but you used any software? Are... Yes, sir. Sir, please. Sir, please tell me. Yeah. Uh, I understand your question. Currently, that um, structural activity relationship based uh, systems are available um, for an excipients. Uh, for these studies, uh, we could say that uh, we have not utilized uh, uh, any software uh, related approach or structural relative uh, structural relation approach for that selection of experience. Okay, so sir, uh, my other question, can I ask one more question to you? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. And in vitro drug release studies, have you used a bio-relevant media? Uh, where in the other question? Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. In case of an campothesis, I early, uh, earlier it's uh, mentioned it. It is a sand, uh, very low poor water solubility as a sand oil solubility also. Uh, we have used a uh, system consists of an 30% an ethanol along with a buffer pH 7.4. Dr. Algu Sundaram, sir, you are open to speak. Sir, sir, sir good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, nowadays, uh, that lot of uh, the targeted drug delivery system as well as nano drug delivery system, uh, mm -hmm. the, those who are doing research, they are facing the stability problem. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, how we can improve the stability in the lab wise, the laboratory scale for the preparation of nanoparticles? Sir, that again, uh, okay, anyway, this question is uh, depends that what kind of an polymeric uh, uh, systems or a nanoscale drug delivery systems, whether you are, you will be making it, whether it is a polymer stabilized or a lipid, uh, lipid based systems or an emulsions, liposomes, that depending upon that, that stabilizations will matter, which cannot be generalized. So, see, you know that. If we go into a lower size that has that lower particle size that has a tendency to get a accumulator or uh, joining together and becoming a greater particles, particles. So you need to identify what, what could be that cross-cuttable size for your nanoparticles. Say for an example, I'll be using for an uh, cancer so in case of a cancer if i make an uh, nanoparticles of a size of an 150 50 nanometers or an 100 nanometers uh, that peak permeation enhanced retention effect may not be useful that maybe goes inside at the same time which will comes out of from that uh, cancer so you need to choice and proper size of that uh, particulate systems. So based on that, if you minimize your low lower particulate size of the system to a certain extent, uh, 
you can stabilize your formulation that is as an one of one approach then you can make that uh, systems is as an less chargeable or bringing into a neutral side that will also to certain ex uh, extent uh, reduces that uh, particulate uh, enhances that uh, particulate system stability So you are able to hear that, Alok Sundar? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, he, he has reached the answer. Sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, next, Thank let you. us take the question from uh, Rajeshwar Reddy, Dr. Rajeshwar Reddy, sir. Sir, uh, can you? Well, I am uh, audible, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. You can talk. Sir, uh, excellent presentation. Thank you very much, sir. I have a small uh, query. Uh, yes, sir. Citations yes. can be used as. Uh, adjuvants for uh, viral therapy for cancer sir yes sir it has been you know, a lot of studies has been done which has been used uh, for uh, as an non viral vectors for an um, delivery of uh, genes and vaccines one, uh, vaccines one can be utilized one more small question sir yes sir please uh, cytosines are uh, water insoluble right yes so are so there any grains are uh, water soluble or an acid soluble by Uh, altering and deacetylation groups, as well as as an amination process, we can convert it into one. Or uh, by converting into an organic salt, we can con also convert it into a water soluble form. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's take the, a couple of two more questions, sir. Um, sir, am I allowed to take two more questions? Yeah, from my side, it's not an issue, but from your side, it just think of it. No, sir, not not like that. Thank you, sir. Uh, let us take a question from Son Limber. Yes. Sir, your your mic is unmuted now. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the committee. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Sonlima from Indonesia. Uh, thank you, sir. Please, sir. Okay. Nice to hear the presentations. Thank All you. about nanoparticles. Okay. My question is how to make The nanoparticles with cytosan, because cytosan is already have already in the market, so it's just only to put to. Yes, make sir. We can use simple process called as an ionic gelation, uh, wherein you just take that um, dissolve your cytosan into an uh, acetic acid, dilute acetic acid, make it into a solution to which you can add an. Try polyphosphate. Allow them to get interact. Uh, that due to an ionic interaction, uh, that will form such a precipitation of uh, nanoparticles. That precipitated nanoparticulate systems can be centrifuged and washed, and then it can be obtained as a nanoparticle particles. Okay. Uh, so the simplest technique. There are a lot of techniques. By simply, you can use it as an ionic gelation. Depending upon that, you can go for an uh, polymerization or a micro micro emulsion techniques. There are a lot of techniques. Simple ionic gelation or an precipitation techniques can be utilized very well for preparing of a nanoparticle particles from cytosine. Okay. Uh, Father, uh, question. I have yes. I have already I have already isolated beta carotene. Yes, sir. Without not by uh, organic solvent. Okay. So far we know the beta carotene is extracted by organic solvent, right? Yes. So I have I have already uh, extracted it by non-organic solvent by. So, did you mean to say that by an ionic liquids? Uh, by uh, substance, okay. In I have already get the beta carotene. I have already uh, scan it. Yes, yes, no problem, no problem. Yeah, come to your so, question. Okay, so how to to make this beta carotene to make a nanoparticle? So we can use it to many uh, uh, many product like in pharmaceuticals. A product. Yeah, there are. For I example, think there uh, are an, uh, specific articles is also been published, 
I could not uh, remember oh. whether it has been uh, in beta carotene itself. Uh, it is from a Munster or a Gaint University. There are is an already the article has been available in an internet or uh, it can go a product or in formulations by using an petrosin. It's already it is there. Oh. Okay, okay, but. Uh, but it I may be an isolated product, etc. Anyway, that yeah. process for an isolation of an beta carotene may be a novel. Yeah, but okay. once it's a product, it is a product. It is an X. It is a product. Now you can use it as an any available techniques. You can use it. Yeah, I think uh, that my uh, that beta carotene is the novel. So I would like to make a nanoparticle from this to. Uh, another pharmaceutical. Yeah, company. you can very well. You can, yeah, you can very well. Can be. Things. Yeah, it can. Okay, thank you. I will discuss soon for Dr. Subarians. No, sense. no problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Thank you for the committee. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, we have a, uh, one more question from uh, someone like Oppo A five S. Uh, may I have your name, please, sir? Uh, uh, Ms. Oppo A5S. Sir, your mic is open now. You can speak now. Sir, can you able to hear me? Hello? So uh, these were the questions, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, we are extremely happy uh, for spending such a long time with us. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for all the Thank ideas you, that sir. have taken part. Thank you, sir, for your time. Sir, uh, now I'd like to request Dr. Yuganda, sir, uh, to kindly propose a vote of thanks. Yuganda, sir, your mic is unmute now. Speak. Okay. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Thank you. So, well, that was an excellent presentation, sir. So, the gratitude is the inward feeling of kindness, which is received as an impulse. And thanksgiving is the follow-up of that impulse. So, well, uh, it's a wonderful day for me to take the privilege to thank everyone for this occasion. First of all, let me start with the participants. I th thank all the participants to show such great response for this interactive webinar session, especially those participants who are from abroad, especially countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, etc. Untuksuma participant Indonesia, Untuksuma participant Malaysia, Salamat Sejatra, Salamat Sengahari, Terima Kasih. So well, in addition, I would like to add a thanks note on uh, our team members of organizing committee who have organized such a wonderful event. And then I would like to take the privilege to thank our dynamic cruising principal, Dr. Sai Madhuswaram Chetty, for this uh, wonderful organization, without whose approach this wouldn't have been existed. And in addition, I take the privilege to thank SREC IT support and SREC principal and all other staff members who have helped us in carrying out this webinar. In addition, I would like to add a thanks note to our uh, director admin, RGM Group of Institutions, Dr. Ashok Kumar Garu, for his support and encouragement for this webinar session. And in addition, I would like to add thanks note to our uh, top management, especially our chairman, sir, Dr. Sri Santi Ramud Garu, for his uh, un- uh, and uh, unbelievable and unstoppable uh, support and continuous support for all the approaches, whatever we bring in. 
last but not the least i would like to take the privilege to thank the speaker dr subramanian natishan sir so you have given a wonderful and excellent uh, sharing of your knowledge about uh, cytosan polymers and its application into cancer therapy and you had nice interaction with worldwide people whatever and whoever has been participated in our uh, today's session thank you thank you one and all and uh, thanks very much and uh, finally i would like to thank myself to take part in uh, this wonderful session thank you all thank you very much namaste thank you sir thank you so much sir uh, so that was the today's session dear audience thank you so much for bearing with us and being with us i uh, once again thank you so much for the speak today speaker dr subramanian nation sir for sparing his valuable time with us thank you so much for all the audience who have taken part in this wonderful session so that was the today's uh, uh, session tomorrow we are going to have one more session from uh, uh, dr khatakam prakash sir from nanded madhya pradesh uh, sorry maharashtra at the same time 11:30 so you have the link in your mails uh, please join for tomorrow's session also uh, the topic for the tomorrow's uh, <coughs> session is uh, uh, therapeutic repurposing strategies for covid 19 so by tomorrow 11:30 we are going to meet once again the link is already in your mails so please join us for tomorrow session also have a nice day stay alert stay positive and stay safe jai hind